Right Honourable Prime Minister, Members of Parliament, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. The Government of Uganda, particularly my ministry and the Bank of Uganda, has, close, has worked closely with the International Growth Centre and its network of researchers for almost two years. Jointly, we have completed a number of studies that have facilitated evidence-based decision-making, for instance, the objective research that has been done on the East Africa integration has proved particularly valuable in guiding the negotiations between the East Africa partner states, culminating in the signing into, into being of the roadmap to East Africa Monetary Protocol. Thank you very much for your assistance in, in, in that achievement. But I think the presence of the Prime Minister here today says it all. Uganda puts great importance into the work and the deliberations of this forum. The Prime Minister, as you know, is a very, very busy man, and I would like to cede the podium to him so he can give us his keynote speech, and then we can continue afterwards. Right Honourable Prime Minister, thank you very much for making the time to be with us today. Please come and give me uh, thank you very much, Honorable Maria Chonka, the Minister of Finance and Economic Development, the Deputy Governor, Bank of Uganda, uh, Dr. Luis Kasekende, the Director and Senior Staff of the International Growth Center. I had uh, the MC addressing permanent secretaries. Yes, I can see one. There's one here. Permanent secretary, Dr. Osman. And all of you, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is my great honor and pleasure to welcome you to this International Growth Center Africa Growth Forum. To our visitors to Uganda and uh, by the statistics of the MC about how many some of the national anthem I assume there are only two Ugandans the rest <laughs> <laughs> must be visitors to Uganda I warmly welcome you to Uganda and I wish you a pleasant and productive stay in this country. Enjoy the friendship of Ugandans and find time to experience the wonderful attractions in the power of Africa. The main reason for this forum is to discuss ideas for growth. Africa is undoubtedly the continent on the rise. Africa is experiencing a rapid and profound transformation Africa's economic gains over the past decade have been impressive with high levels of economic growth averaging 5.7%, particularly coming as they have in a context of global weakness and uncertainty. That's more than twice the growth rate observed over the 1990s. The East African community, the region, has been one of the fastest growing regions in the world with real gross domestic product growing by 6.2% in the last decade. Six of the 10 fastest growing economies in the world are in Sub-Saharan Africa, including Uganda, which has recorded real GDP averaging 6.8% between 2003-2004 and 2012-2013 financial years. This has been in spite of the global economic crisis that struck in 2008 and 2009. In fact, many of the fast growing economies are not natural resource exporters. Uganda is one example, though we are yet to join the group of oil exporters. Uganda is one of the countries where Africa's recent progress is evident and where the opportunities for economic transformation and growth are manifest. My main message here is that Africa is moving fast 
forward. And the world is taking note of this dynamism. There is now a widespread celebration of Africa's performance, and Africa is now closer than ever to transforming its economic potential into self-sustaining growth. The region has proved remarkably resilient to the global crisis of 2008-2009, and many countries have experienced sustained increases in per capita income, lifting living conditions and reducing poverty during the 2000s. The region's economic outlook is rather promising. Regional GDP is expected to grow by 5% in 2013 and by 5.5% next year, 2014. Even if all economies are not expanding at the same pace, the regional average projects a remarkable dynamism. This dynamism is very much related to increasing trade and investment flows. Africa's exports go <coughs> forward from 2000 to 2007. These positive achievements are also due to fundamental improvements in macroeconomic policies which have allowed the continent's average fiscal deficit to fall steadily from 7% in the 1980s to close to zero at the end of the, of the 2000s. Inflation dropped from over 10% on average during the 1990s to an average of 6% during the 2000s. The challenge is the need to sustain the strategic gains we have made cannot be overemphasized. Africa and African countries must address multiple economic and social challenges that stand between the continent and lasting development. One, inclusive growth remains elusive. Africa's remarkable GDP growth and macroeconomic performance still need to translate into improvements in living standards. Despite recent progress, the latest data shows that nearly 78% of the population of Sub-Saharan Africa is still living in poverty, while close to 49% still lives in extreme poverty. Africa will probably be the only region that will not meet the Millennium Development Goals and especially that of halving poverty by 2015. Two, widening inequality is another concern. African wealth disparities are among the broadest in the world. According to a study by the African Development Bank, of last year, 2012, six of the ten most unequal countries are in sub-Saharan Africa. The continent needs a catalyst to speed up economic transformation and better distribute the benefits of growth. Without a faster and more profound transformation, Africa runs the risk of losing out on the demographic transition that Asia was able to tap some decades ago. Three, unemployment. <clears throat> All African countries are grappling with unemployment and underemployment. The greatest challenge here is unemployment of the youth who represent close to 60% of the total unemployment in the region with one of the world's largest young populations, this can be a ticking time bomb. We need to turn it into a great opportunity. Four, infrastructure deficit. Although the highest, that reminded me that Maybe my phone. Thank you. 
Although the continent has successfully maintained an average growth rate of 5.7% for the past for the 10 years, Africa accounts for 12% of the world's population, <clears throat> but only contributes 1% of global GDP and only 2% of world trade. Energy, water, sanitation, telecoms, and transport have long been identified as a major set of trade on the continent. Energy supply continues to be Africa's largest infrastructure challenge, with 30 countries experiencing frequent power outages, and just over third of Africa's population having access to electricity. About 60% of the world's uncultivated arable land is in Africa. But because of poor roads and lack of proper storage, African farmers can lose up to half of their crop just trying to get to the market. Five, human capital. So Saharan Africa lags behind all regions in the global economy in terms of accessibility to education. Globally, the structure of production is changing. Increasingly, it is becoming knowledge intensive, and this is accompanied by a demand for high quality human capital. Sub Saharan Africa's low levels of human capital deter technological upgrading and adaptability to best practices in production, and with globalization occurring at a fast pace, developing high quality human capital is a cornerstone in maintaining Africa's competitiveness. While governments in Africa are trying to encourage schooling by providing tuition free education, <coughs> primary level of education, it must be noted that gaining global, global competitiveness calls for education attainment beyond the primary level. Linked to the issue of education attainment is the need to ensure that Africa's workforce is productive at the workplace. For the private sector to be an engine of growth, it must have what it takes to assume this role. At the core of this expected role of the private sector being the engine of growth, is a well-trained workforce. Nevertheless, we can now say that the economic stagnation that characterized most of our history is in the past. The issue, therefore, is defining and implementing the policies that will enable Africa to seize these opportunities. Sustaining economic growth over the long term will not be easy and you take an integrated approach that must include the promotion of good governance and strong democratic institutions. The government here in Uganda is focused on this and continues to strengthen the institutional framework of government and the democratization process. A lesson in Africa must grow from the recent global economic events associated with the global financial crisis and sovereign debt is that with a sluggish global economy, building Africa's internal market cannot be business as usual. According to the African Development Bank, intra-African exports represent only 9.6% of the region's total exports compared to 20% for Latin America and 48% for the developing nations of Asia. Boosting intra-African trade can strengthen the continent's industries by creating economies of scale, establishing and strengthening product value chains, and facilitating the transfer of technology and knowledge. Such activities can also promote infrastructure development and attract foreign direct investment. There can be no complacency about Africa's economic success. To sustain growth and make it more inclusive,
capital spending must remain a priority. Two factors are critical here. Closing the infrastructure gap, which shapes of 2% of Africa's growth per annum, and getting our markets together. This is what private sector investors are looking for. This is what it takes to join the high levels of the global value chain. That is what will create a robust and resilient internal market that can withstand external shocks. That is where jobs are. This conference promises to address many of the critical economic issues facing African continents. I look forward to the discussions over the next two days and hearing your views. The IGC forum will provide a unique forum for in-depth presentations of policy-oriented research by academicians and practitioners. The IGC forum will examine the efforts being made in different sectors and areas, including public investment and finance, governance, productivity enhancement in rural areas, trade and investment, and natural resource management. Discussions will focus on issues specific to low-income countries and those peculiar to fragile states. The forum will also be discussing the unsuitable array of legal, institutional, and regulatory frameworks that constrain Africa's growth. Finding solutions to these developing or development challenges is a critical issue. I hope this forum will address most of these challenges and offer practical insights based on case studies in Africa. It is on this note that I would like to wish you all fruitful declarations and a successful forum. Thank you.